so hello everyone welcome to yet another video on discrete maths in this video we are going to start a new uh, topic this topic is called functions right so before I start uh, before I go any further let me give you the definition of function I will not write it on the board I will uh, read it out to you uh, you can refer to my notes or to your book to get the whole definition in text form so let us say we have two sets a and b right so both these sets are non-empty sets so we have two non-empty sets a and b a function from this set a to this set b is an assignment of exactly one element of uh, b to each element of a so what does this mean right we will come to that uh, so see, uh, there are more things in the definition. We write f of a equal to b. Okay. f of a is equal to b. If b is the unique element for a given by this function f. right? So what is this function? We have this thing called function from this set to this set so for each element in this set okay we will have a mapping from that element of this set to an element of the other set right so that is called a function we write this so for this element a of this set capital a we map this small a this element to this element b of the other set right so from a set a we have a mapping to set b so this small a belongs to set a this b belongs to set b right so we write f of a equal to b if b is the unique element of capital b assigned by the function f to the element small a of the set capital a okay so if this function f is from this set to this set we write f a to b this is the notation used to denote that the function f is from this set a to this set b okay now functions are also called mapping or transformations so if you uh, hear me use the word mapping you should know that I am talking about some function that maps from some set to some other set right okay so if f is a function then we call this the domain uh, yeah, we call this the domain, we call this the codomain, right? So we say that B is the image, right? This element small b is the image of this element A. A is called the pre-image of B and B is called the image of A. Now, a few things that you should know a function will take each element of this set a and for each element there will be a mapping to some element of this set b okay so there is a difference between this function in discrete maths and the function that you learn in programming languages uh, a programming language function is very general uh, you know we have already seen in python that a python function for example can return multiple values so we have seen that we have done that in it workshop where we have created a function in python that can return more than one single value but in discrete maths each element will have only one value 
So a function in discrete maths will take some element from the set, from the domain and map to exactly one in the codomain. Okay, a function cannot have multiple images in the codomain. Okay. So all these elements, right, in this function, all the elements in the domain will give some image in the pre-domain. Uh, in the codomain, right. So the set of all these images is called the range of the function. Okay. Let us now see what is happening here. Okay. This is the function. What is the uh, domain? This set is the domain. The set of all these characters, Nobita, Shizuka, Jian, then Sunio and Doremon. This set will be the set of what? Domain. Then what is the set of uh, codomain? The set of codomain, for example, let's say these are the grades that they got in some exam. So all the grades that are possible, A, B, C, D and F. These are say the grades, okay, that they can be assigned, that the students in this set can be assigned. So those would be the codomain. What is this? This is the domain. This is the codomain. Now what is the range? See, for Nobida it is A, for Shizuka it is A, for Jian it is B, for Sunio it is C, for Doraemon it is F. So these are the grades obtained by these characters. right? So we can see that for none of them, none of them got D grade. So for none of these pre-images, the image is D. So D, although it is in the codomain, it would not be in the range of this function. So in the range, we will have only A, B, C and F. So this would be the range of the function. Okay. Once again, uh, let me reiterate. A function is what? A function is a mapping from one set to another. Okay. This is the set of students. This is the set of grades. So let me call this S. Let me call this G. So I have this function F. This maps from this set S to this set, uh, to the other set, set G. And what is the mapping? F of Nobita is a, f of Shizuka is A, f of Jian is B, f of Sunio is C, and f of this Doraemon is F. So this is the mapping the detail of the function now in this codoming we can see that there is nothing that maps any of this element in the domain to this element of this set set of codomain there is this element called d there is nothing mapping to d right so d would not be in the range d would be in the codomain something could have mapped to d but nobody did. So D is in the codomain, D is not in the range. So this is all about uh, function. We saw what is a function. We saw what this notation means. This F of some element is equal to, this element will come from the set of domain, will be equal to some other element. This element will come from the set of codomain right so this is what does this notation mean we got that this is called the image of a this is this a is called the pre-image of b all right then we learned some more terminologies spe uh, specifically domain codomain uh, image pre-image and range so with that we are 
ready to look at a few more things right uh, this is one way of representing a function we have represented a function here graphically we can also represent function using formulas for example let us say i have a function g this g is a function from the set of integers to the set of integers okay where g is given by this g of x equal to x plus 1 okay here we have represented this function using some formula in the same way we can uh, for example say h is some function from uh, the set of real number to the set of real number where x if say uh, h of x will be equal to x if x is greater than equal to 0 or will be equal to minus x otherwise okay so this is also a way of representing a function do you know what this function is called this is the modulo function correct so this uh, if you give uh, say minus 1 in here you will get back 1 if you give 1 in here you will get 1 so it will give it will take any real number and return the uh, positive of that number so if you give any negative number it will re, uh, do a, a minus 1 it will do a multiplication with minus 1 and return that number and if you give a positive number it will simply return that number so this is the mod function so we have uh, three different functions right now on the book this is one function that is represented graphically using some sort of a diagram here we have another function that is written using a formula here we have a formula again but then with a condition right so we have three functions over here now let us uh, look at three questions So here is the question, let f be the function that assigns the last two bits of a bit string of length 2 or greater than that <coughs> to a bit string, uh, okay, yeah. Uh, so what is the question, let f be a function that assigns the last two bits of a bit string of length greater than 2 or equal to 2 to that string okay what is the domain codomain and range what does this mean if I have any bit string say 1010 it will this function f will take this element and will assign it to the last two bit 0 1 okay this is what it means if I have some other string say uh, 11011 it will assign it to the last two bits 11 so what is the domain of this function in the domain of this function we will have the set of all the bit string of length 2 or greater than 2 so if our uh, bit strings length is less than 2 we cannot of course assign it to any uh, bit string of length 2 right so our bit strings in the domain would be of length 2 or greater than 2 now what is in the codomain so the last two bits of the bit string can be 00 0 1 0 and 1 1 so this would be the codomain and since we have all the bit strings in the uh, domain I will have some bit string 1 1 0 0 that will map to this I will have some bit string this one for example that maps to this I have some bit string this for example that maps to this and I will have some bit string 1110 that will map to this so 
all the elements in the codomain will be in the range of the function okay so in this function all the bit string of length 2 or greater than 2 will be in the domain this is the codomain and this is the range of the uh, function right? okay next let us say, uh, look at this function f goes from z to z that is from the set of integers to the set of integers okay where f of x is equal to x square now what is the domain it is given here right we have already specified the domain and the uh, codomain of the function so both domain and codomain is the set of integers what is the range of this function so will all the elements will all the integers be there in the range no only the perfect squares will be there right so there is no integer whose square is 2 for example so 2 will not be in the range so there is no integer whose square is a negative number correct so all the negative numbers will not be there so what will be there all the perfect squares will be there right so range will be the set of perfect squares so that is this set 0 1 4 9 16 25 and so on okay Now two more definitions. A function is called real valued function if its codomain is the set of real numbers. Right? And a function is called a integer valued function if its codomain is the set of integers. Understand that? A function maps from one set to another set. From some domain to some codomain. Right? So if the codomain of a function is the set of real number then that function is called a real valued function if the codomain is the set of integers then that function is called a integer valued function okay now here is the thing two real valued function or two integer valued function they can be added or multiplied okay so let me write that down let f1 and f2 be functions from r to r that is from real, the set of real number to the set of real number then we can define f1 plus f2 and f1 into f2 where f1 plus f2 is given by this f1 plus f2 of x is equal to f1 of x plus f2 of x okay and f1 into f2 of x is given by f1 of x multiplied by f2 of x okay with that let, uh, let us solve a problem okay the definition is done let us say we have two functions f1 and f2 both of these functions are from r to r set of real number to set of real number okay where f1 is given by uh, f1 of x is equal to x square and f2 of x is equal to uh, x minus x square. Okay. 
so what is f1 plus f2 this would also be a function and f1 into f2 this would also be a function what are these functions let us figure it out f1 plus f2 of x f1 f2 of x this is f1 of x plus f2 of x that is equal to x square plus x minus x square and that is equal to x this is equal to f1 of x into f2 of x and that is equal to x square into x minus x square this is equal to x cube minus x to the power 4 fine this is how you can find the addition of two function and the uh, multiplication of two function so what kind of function can be added or multiplied two real valued function can be added or multiplied right two integer valued function can be added or multiplied so if the codomain of two functions are the same then they can be added or multiplied we cannot add or multiply two different functions whose codomains are different so we cannot do that okay so next let us look at the two type of function one is called on to and the other is called one to one okay once again simple concept A one to one function. Hold on. Okay. A function f from set A to B is said to be one to one or an injunction. If and only if f of a is equal to f of b implies that a is equal to b, right? So let us also write the equivalent contrapositive form of this implication. The contrapositive form would be a not equal to b implies that f of a is not equal to f of b so let us understand what it means a function is said to be one to one or injunction if every u element in uh, the domain has a unique image in p uh, the codomain right so what does this mean that no two elements in the domain will map to the same element in the codomain okay every value will be different so that is called a one to one function next let us look at onto function so onto function means what it means that every element in the domain uh, sorry every element in the codomain will have some element uh, which is its pre-image in the uh, domain right so once again uh, what does this mean every element in the codomain would have some element in the domain which will map to that element so no element will be left out for example in our first example that Doraemon's example okay we said that nobody got this grade D, nobody got D grade. So there was some element in the uh, codomain that was not mapped to by any element in the domain, right? So that function was not onto. And also was that function one to one? So we saw that both Nobita and Shizuka, 
right so both of them got a grid so we had two elements in the domain which map to the same element these two elements in the domain are different but they map to the same element in the codomain so it was also not one to one okay so more formally speaking a onto function okay for every element y in the codomain will have some element x in the domain such that f of x will be equal to y so every element y in the codomain will have some element x for which f of x will be equal to y right this is the formal definition of onto function now one to function is also called injective function a onto function is also called surjective function all right so onto is also called surjection so you should know this terminologies on to one to one and also this terminologies injunction surjection injective function surjective function in interviews later on they may ask they may use this terminologies instead of using this more popular terminology like instead of saying one to one they may just to test your knowledge they may ask you injective okay so this is all about one to one and on to next let us look at the last one that is bijective function or one to one correspondence also known as bijection okay very simple definition a function is called one to one correspondence or bijection if it is both on to and one to one right so simple so this kind of function is called a bijective function so this is all about one to one on to and bijective function let us look at a few functions let us first look at a few function represented graphically okay this is my function one this maps here this maps here this maps here this is my function 2 this maps here this maps here oh, that's all right this maps here and this maps here all right let us look at another function let us say this maps here this maps here this goes here and this goes here And finally, 
this one. This is goes to this and this goes to this. This goes to this and say this goes to this. Right. Okay. So I have graphically drawn all these five different representations. Right. So each of them is it one to one? Is it on to? Pause the video and try to figure out on your own before I answer it. I hope you have uh, done figuring out. Let us look at each of them. Is this one to one? Okay. For each of them, there is a image. Uh, there is an image in the codomain. So each of the image is unique, right? So no, there is no image in the codomain to which two different uh, pre-images are pointing. So this is one to one. Is it on two? No. There is this element in the codomain which is not a pre uh, which is not a image of any element in the domain. Right? Nobody is pointing to this element. So this is not on two. Alright. What about this one? Is this one to one? No. I can see that there are two uh, elements in the codomain which are pointing to the same uh, element in the domain. So this image has two pre images. We can see here. Now this is not equal to this, but f of this is equal to f of this, right? So that cannot be true. So this is not one to one. Is it on two? We can see that every element has some element in the uh, domain. Every element in the codomain has some element in the domain, which is its pre-image, right? So it is on two. What about this? Every element has a unique element in the uh, codomain. Every element in the domain has a unique element in the codomain. So this is one to one. And every element in the codomain has some pre-image in the domain. Every element in the codomain is being pointed to by some element in the domain. So this is both one to one and on to. For that reason, is this one to one correspondence? Is this bijection? Yes, this is bijection. Now let us look at this. Is this uh, one to one? I can see that this element in the codomain is being pointed to by two different elements, right? So every this element is not equal to this element, but the f of this element is equal to f of this element. Okay, so this is not one to one. Is it on to? We can see that there is this element which is not the image of any element in the domain. So this is not on to. What about this? Here we can see that there is this element which has two images. Right? So this is not even a function. So, these five different graphically represented, four of them are function, one is not a function. So, we saw whether each of them is one to one or on to. If they, uh, some of them, if it is both one to one and on to, then it is also a one to one correspondence or a bijection. Okay. Okay, uh, 
let us look at some more function and try to figure out whether they are one to one or one to one. Okay. First, let us figure out for this function from this set a b c d to this set one two three four five. given by f of a is equal to 4, f of b is equal to uh, 5, f of c is equal to 1 and f of d is equal to 3. So is this 1 to 1? So for each of this element the image is different, unique. So there is no two different pre-image okay for which we get the same image so this is definitely one to one okay next tell me is this on to let us see is there any anything in the is there any element in the domain for which the image is equal to 2 so there is no element in the domain for which the image is equal to 2 right so this will not be on 2 there is some element in the codomain for which there is no pre image this is not on 2 okay now let me modify the question a little bit. Had this 2 not been there, in that case what would have happened? Right. In that case, each of the element in the codomain would have some element which is its pre-image in the domain. So in that case it would have been on 2. Alright. Okay. Next, let us look at this function this function from the set of integer to the set of integers all right the function is given by fx equal to x square okay is this on to Oh, sorry, is this one to one? Let us figure out one to one first, then we will go to on to. Is this one to one? Uh, let me try to see. F of minus one is what? Minus one square. That is equal to one. F of plus one is equal to one. So what do we have? We have F of minus one equal to F of plus one. But minus 1 is not equal to 1 right what was the definition of onto definition of onto say f of a will be equal to f of b if if this is true then a should be equal to b but i have some f of a equal to f of b but then a is not equal to b right so this is not one to one. So what did we see till now? We saw that there are two different elements in the uh, domain for which they share the same uh, image in the codomain, right? So it is not. One to one. Is it on two? In the codomain, I have this number minus one. Okay. In this codomain, I have this number two. So, is there any integer in the domain? Right. Is there anything such that f of that thing will be equal to minus 1. In other words, is there any x such that x square is equal to minus 1? Or is there any x such that x square is equal to 2? 
so x square will be equal to 2 only in case of x being square root of 2 but then square root of 2 is a irrational number it does not belong to the set of integers it is not there in our domain so is there anything in our domain for which uh, the square of that number will be equal to 2 okay all right sorry i meant uh, codomain is there anything in our codomain such that uh, 2 is there in our codomain is there anything that will map to 2 is there anything minus 1 is there in our codomain is there anything in our domain that will map to minus 1 so the complex number i i square would be minus 1 but then i is not in our set of integers so there are things in the codomain for example this two that do not have a image in the domain right so this is not on two next let us look at this function f from set of real number to set of real number such that f of x equal to x plus 1 okay now every element in the uh, codomain would have some element such that the mapping would be there right for every element x in the codomain x minus 1 will map to that number so it is on two is it one to one let us figure out f of x equal to f of y when will this be true this means x plus 1 is equal to y plus 1 this will only be true when x equal to 1 right so what does this mean f of x will be equal to f of y if f of x is equal to f of y then x is equal to y only under this condition will this be true so this is also one to one okay so yeah in this video we will wrap up with this till now we have seen the definition of function we have seen what is the domain of a function what is codomain of a function what is range of a function right then we saw different ways of representing function for example functions being represented graphically functions being represented in details like uh, this is what i did f of from set a b c to set 1 2 3 represented f of a equal to 1 f of b equal to 2 f of c equal to 3 say this is one more representation of a function then we have seen function being represented using uh, formulas function being represented using formulas and conditions so different way of representing function we have seen till now right. then we saw uh, some function and we figured out what is the uh, domain codomain and range of that function we saw what is the meaning of real valued function and integer valued function and then we learned that two real valued function or two integer valued function can be added and multiplied then we saw what is the meaning of one to one function also called injective function we saw what is the meaning of onto function also called surjective function and we saw what is the meaning of one to one correspondence or bijective function so after that we saw graphical representation of different kind of function and we tried to figure out whether these are one to one onto 
and one to one correspondence then we saw a few examples written in this format and using formulas so those also we tried to figure out whether they are one to one on two and one to one correspondence i hope you understood everything till now in this video uh, if you have any doubt feel free to whatsapp me to send me a mail or to leave a comment in the comment section below see you in the next video till then bye bye